Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. So um, I'm going to switch gears from white wines to red wines this week and another Stelvin enclosure. So um, i got another wine from Underground Cellars. Yes, Underground Cellars. Um, forgot to write that in my little notes here. So uh, this is the... Um, just, we're just going to get into the wines. Uh, this is the 2009 Man of War Dreadnought. Syrah. This is from uh, New Zealand. Ding. Not supposed to touch the glass. Uh, New Zealand uh, bought this for $19 on Underground Cellars. It's actually a $40 bottle of wine. So this is one of those, I bought something else for 19 bucks and this was one of the upgrades. So I'm excited for buying a $40 wine for $19. That's why I like Underground Cellar, because you sometimes get pretty decent deals. I was looking at actually at my, at my Cloud Cellar, and uh, I have a few other wines that I got for a pretty good deal. I think, like some type of, I think I spent like 20 bucks on an $80 bottle of wine or a $75 bottle of wine, whatever. It was good value. Um, anyway, so this is from Manowar Vineyards. Um, they are on the Waiheke or Waiheke uh, Island in New Zealand. The island was discovered by Captain James Cook in 1769 uh, when he saw the island. I guess the trees that are on there, he decided that there were, what kind of trees? They're kauri trees, K-A-U-R-I uh, trees. They would be really good, like good for the, for the masts on the Man of War ships. Um, so that's where the uh, that's where these guys got the name for uh, their winery. Uh, the current owners bought about uh, 4,500 acres that are spread over four different uh, contiguous farms on the island, and they've only planted 150 acres of uh, under vine, and it said are planted in 76 individual hillside blocks. Um, the Dreadnought comes from five different vineyards. Um, that, that's only the 2011-2012 information, but they're exactly the same vineyards, five of them. It also said it's 30% new French oak and 70% older oak, um, both vintages. I don't know what the nine is like, but I'm going to assume that it's pretty darn close. All right, so I'm using my little timer utility on the computer this time um, so I can get the actual 410. And then uh, let's get going on the wine. Yes, so a couple of videos for a few episodes. Yes, I already know what the wine is. It's more about practicing the grid and verbalizing my stuff. Um, trying not to, as I did for a few episodes, giving my little commentary in between and running out of time because of that. And then after that, giving some extra analysis or thoughts. What's that? Thoughts on the wine. All right. This wine is a red wine, uh, no evidence of any gas or sediment. Um, there is moderate staining on the glass. Uh, it is of a medium intensity. Uh, it is moderate, not, not quite clear, but not quite opaque, so medium on the opacity. Um, it is a definitely a red wine, I mean red color, to almost orange tinge at the end which might indicate some age which it does um, viscosity is call it low <laughs> on the nose um I feel like I get some type of bug spray, which might be a fault. 
citronella um, stuff you for mosquitoes. And I could be just misidentifying something, but it's not really that bad bug spray, citronella, but there is a um, almost a chemical. It's really more smoky than than chemical as I let the let this spin around. Yeah, it's more just old fire, old, old campfire smokiness. Does not smell youthful at all. Um, does not smell too aged, but definitely not youthful. Not a whole lot of fruit on the nose. I do get a savoriness, uh, meatiness. Hints of wood, cedar box. A little bit of earth. Hints of earth. I smell wood and spiciness. So evidence of wood, but more uh, black pepper. Yeah, black pepper. On the palate, this is dry. Uh, tannins are medium plus, acid is high, uh, alcohol is moderate. I call it a medium body, medium plus body uh, wine. Um, palate confirms the nose, um, lots of smoked meat, peppered meat, um, charred wood, uh, spice, black pepper, other spices, other cooking, uh, not baking, but cooking spices. Um, Oregano, um, uh, 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 um, I can't think of another one, but uh, it is balanced. Uh, finish is medium plus. Uh, it is of medium plus complexity. There's more stuff I just have a hard time identifying from a, definitely a quality producer. And I'm at 22 seconds. So at this point, um, I would... I would probably be a little confused as to whether I should call this new world or old world. Um, it doesn't have as much savoriness as I'm hoping that some Syrahs I'm going to have here in another couple weeks of episodes. Um, another couple episodes. Yeah. What do you know? Countdown finished. Um, but I would possibly say this is new world only because I don't get it just doesn't feel like a own. So that's where I also struggle. How do I describe old world versus new world on certain wines? Because sometimes it's just obvious. There's, it's very earthy versus very fruity, but that's not always the answer. There's other things you have to, you have to have. So, um, but I would almost certainly say this was a Syrah. Like my, my descriptors and what I feel, I already know what it is, but I would take it to Syrah and this is where I would, I would not, this is not a testable wine, as far as no Syrah from New Zealand, um, Syrah from the Rhone, Syrah from the United States. Uh, let's see, dun, dun, dun. Syrah from Northern Rhone, South Australia or Victoria, and California. So, a New Zealand Syrah is not part of the deal, but. I really like it. There's there's like this very just like charred black pepper encrusted meaty sausage. Like that's why I know it's Syrah, and I would I would probably call it a, a Northern Rhone Syrah. But there's there's when I call that that bug spray citronella, that really was just more the smoke and the 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 charred campfire. So I was identifying something incorrectly and I was able to go like, nah, that's not it. It also could have just been, there might've been something in the glass from pouring it out and it just hadn't, it just hadn't escaped out of the glass. 
But there is something like being like outside on on a, at night, maybe around a campfire. There, but I, but there is almost like a bug repellent type of thing to it. So that might take me to New World. But this is really good wine. It's definitely forty dollars worth of wine. This is why I'm definitely gonna have to drink over the next day or two, because it is a screw cap. Um, I'll have to vacuum in it. And um, it's like a shame to like pour this out and spit it. It's good. If you can find this wine out there, Man of War, um, they have some other wines. They do other, they do, they do quite a few different wines and they, they look like they do a good job, at least from this from this bottle. Again, there is that little hint of chemical, so that's the only thing that kind of turns me off. But with the right food and you concentrate on the other flavors, it's totally fine. Um, especially at 2009, it's got a little bit of age to it, um, so that the the newer wines might have a little more fruit forwardness to it. But I really like this wine. If you can find it, it's worth the forty dollars. All right, so. That's going to do it for this episode. As always, uh, if you visit the site, you know, or click the link below. I'll have the link for these guys. Um, leave comments at the website or on YouTube or whatever. I don't ever put the links on YouTube, so you got to go to the website for the link. Um, and while you're on the website, you can hit the donate button over there or see one of the ads and go like, oh, Backblaze or, oh, I forgot what the other ones are. I think Backblaze is basically the only ad I have on there um, because the last, because I had some other ads from some dude who will remain nameless, um, that I am sure I had some type of residual, even if it was like a dollar or two income and I hadn't gotten paid in like a year. So you can't tell me that I hadn't had at least enough to get paid. So I'm just going to leave that one alone. I just took the code off and I'm not going to worry about it. It's not like I'm owed hundreds or thousands of dollars. It's not worth pursuing. Um, anyway, um, but yeah, hit the, hit the donate button over here. Hit the links above to friend me up. Leave me a five star rating on iTunes. Maybe even a kind word or two. That would be most helpful for the iTunes podcasting. I still am the only wine video wine podcast on iTunes currently in production. Um, every once in a while, one of those other guys produces a video or two. Oh, they're coming back. And then they don't do anything for like a year. I at least only take a few weeks off in between groups of recordings. Um, that's going to do it. As always, thank you for stopping by and we'll see everyone again next time.